Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Show Me Your Junk. I just finished getting ready and we are going to take that green dresser up to my Adams location and I'm going to show you how I stage it using the French flower market theme. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell to all so you don't miss any new videos I upload every Thursday and Sunday. I have already taken pictures of the dresser. I am going to go ahead and measure it, write that on the tags. I like to have that not only for when I'm doing my booth tours, but if a customer is looking at it and they're wondering what the measurements are, it's right there on the tag. All of my smalls are boxed up and ready to be loaded. I did take pictures and priced them all the day before. Here's a peek at what I'm taking with me. This is what my booth looked like before I started the refresh that day. Not too bad, but I have a little work to do. I'm going to begin by removing some things that I will either store away until next year or kind of take apart and restyle. Now I'm just assessing and figuring out where I want my big pieces to go. I'm pulling this six bin cubby out of my booth for now because I think I'm gonna paint it and add some cool feet onto it. I do like to give a good sweep and dust when I'm rearranging, keeping my booth nice and fresh for all of my customers. Chad helped me bring this dresser in, and now it is time to do the fun part. I'm going to get it all staged up. I struggled a little bit with the left side of my booth here. I really need to get some more furniture in here, but I have some big things happening in just a couple of weeks, so I don't want to fill it up too much. Y'all have to stay tuned for that big news. I needed some more height over here, so once I turned that galvanized tub up vertically, I think it really helped. Time for some before and afters. This was the left side of my booth before. I did like the stacking going on, but it had been like this for a bit. And this is the left side after. I moved my garden items over here to kind of be closer to my French flower market themed dresser. This was the right side of my booth before. Still some leftover Valentine's floral. I went ahead and pulled that out and I'm going to uh, redo some of those things. And here is after. I love the yellow, the green, the pops of color. This was my little middle vignette before on the green sack table, and you can really see the green sack stripes. So I minimalized that table down. You can see the striping better now. I think that works better. Here was an overall look at my booth before. And here is a look after I moved things around. I'll give you a bit of a closer look here at my little French country flower market themed dresser. I love the way it came out. I love how the um, accents of blue and purple pop against that green. Then you mix in the natural wood and the metal and the glass. Beautiful in my opinion. Pretty soon I'm going to be having these big changes at Adams, like I said, and I'm going to be bringing you guys along with me, showing you more in depth of how I stage my booth and kind of what goes on, um, the thought process behind it. So leave me a comment below if that's something that you're interested in seeing.
I did all of that booth work on Tuesday. Wednesday I spent the day working on a huge custom order that I shipped off to California this morning. But last night I decided randomly to hop on Facebook Marketplace. I haven't been on there forever because I've been getting the huge free hauls and I saw these jugs so I thought I would send a message to the seller. So it was about 20 items including those 12 canning jars. I offered her $40 and she accepted. I did not know what I was about to get myself into. I'll tell you the story as I show you the haul. Here's a clip of me carrying everything inside. I put it all in my kitchen so that I could take care of it this morning. So this morning I asked y'all to guess the price. What did I pay for these items? I got some good guesses and somebody actually got it right on the money, but you're going to have to keep watching to find out. I get there. I have my money and then I have my business card just so I can say, you know, hey, um, if you have any other cool farmhouse stuff you're getting rid of, give me a shout. Well, as soon as I walked up, she's like, hey, I looked up your profile. I see you have a booth. I got a bunch of stuff. Do you want to see it? Yeah, let's go look. So we walk into her garage and it's like shelves of just, you know, wood and metal and glass. And I was like, <laughs> it's fine. Let's just look. Let's just pull it all down and we'll just make a pile. Okay, so initially, you know, I'm going over there and thinking I'm a $40 investment, getting a good deal, right? We get this pile together and she's like, hmm, how about a hundred? Yeah, okay, great, awesome. Let me go get the rest of the cash, pack up and I'll get out of here. You know, she was super sweet. She actually had a booth here in town somewhere and was moving. So she closed her booth and was downsizing some things. So, um, you know, it worked out great for her. It worked out great for me. Everybody's happy. Let's look at this junk. Oh, and by the way, if you saw my post this morning, I said I was going to get my hair trimmed and then I was going to film this haul. My hair appointment got <laughs> rescheduled, obviously, which is fine because that gives me more time to get through all of this stuff. We might get through all of it today. We'll see how long I talk. So first up, we're going to start with a few of my very favorite things, which are bottles and jars. And at the end of this, I'm going to count how many items I have and then I will average everything out. So say I have a hundred items, I spent a hundred dollars, everything cost me a dollar. So am I gonna make a huge profit margin on something like this? No, but will I make a huge profit margin on say something like this? Yeah, much better. This one has a little bit of a teal tint to it. I don't clean these up. I don't um, try to rinse out that goodness. I like it in there and it's got a few bubbles. This one is Ikea, so it's modern but it's a cute shape and it's got the little hobnail on it. Little bud vase. There are two of these. They say Olive Garden on one side, but I thought these would be fun. Um, use some air dry clay and a stamp um, to cover that up. And then you have this cute little teal jug. The handle doesn't connect, so that's super unique. We'll do a little something French country here. Those will be sweet. Next up, another little teal tinted vase, I would say. That would hold, that would be really pretty with peonies in it. They are so big and full at the top, some like bright pink peonies, which I just happened to grow outside. Maybe I'll keep that one. This one's cool. Has a nice ceramic top on it. Sorry to hear the dogs. It's just life. Insulator. I don't sell a ton of these, but I really like this blue color, so I will be putting that one in my booth, and not for very much, a few bucks. Here's another insulator. That one was a little bit different than the ones I normally see, and there were some other insulators in this box, and I, you know, I took them out and put them back because I didn't want a ton of them, but anything teal I can hardly resist, of course. Cute little container with some old um, advertising on it, boot cream. That one's special. We'll wait on that one. Another cool tall bottle. I'll probably wash the outside of this one out. It's like grass and dog hair. But the dirt and stuff inside, I don't worry about. Not so much. Next box. This teal jar, she said, is full of old church keys. These look like bottle openers. Is that a joke? I don't get it. Church keys, bottle openers. I don't know. Is that a thing? But these are cool. 
vintage wooden box. She originally had $10 marked, or originally 18 marked down to nine. Of course, I didn't pay that much. It's got a little drawer. Looks like it needs a little bit of a repair work there. You can give it a good paint job. That'll be super cute. My bedroom is pretty boho. I do love boho as well, um, but I love farmhouse more. But I got a couple of boho-ish things, and I think this has a lid. Oh, oh, there it is. But it looks really boho to me. I haven't been through it yet. This is the first time. I just like metal? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So it looks like we have a barrel. Sexton, 1976, USA. Ooh, hook. Things from the wall here. This one's pretty. I'll probably keep this one for myself. We'll see though, because that would be shippable. Okay. The last two metal things in this box are good. Rooster. He almost looks like a fighting rooster. He's very dusty. And the metal is not super thick on this one. It's not very heavy. But he is cool. And this one I'm going to have to keep. Love the rest. Love the hooks. Love the tulips. That one's going to go in my keeping box right over here. Since I like that other one so much, I'll sell this one. Everything else I'll be selling. Again, I will list some stuff on my website and I'll let you guys know as soon as I do. Might see a few of these things in my next live sale too. Next box, we have some wooden items. So this is just a little crate slash drawer. Looks like it was a drawer. It has a screw back here, but it looks like the hardware was broken off. No worries, I've got some cool old hardware. I'll probably throw something else on there. Not paint it, sell it as is, display it with some cute um, jars of floral in it, and then just sell it all as one big decor item. Maybe add some feet, we'll see. Enamel um, muffin tin, obviously has some rust, not usable. I also thought this would be super cute, like on a little potting stand with some little baby terracotta pots with your little baby plants, your little seedlings that you're working on um, transferring. So I might keep it this year and use it for that. We'll see. I sold one of these recently. She had hers marked for $5. Wow, it's a good deal. I would have bought it for five. Um, I sold mine for $19.95 and I displayed them with my rolling pins. And I think that's what most people use them for these days. This one needs a good clean. I can handle that. Super cute vintage dish. She said she thought this was an ice bucket. I'm not so sure. I thought it would make a super cute planter. Next up is a little crock bowl. Oong, oong -nuck. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna stop. What's that say, y'all? <laughs> USA at the bottom, I can read that. But of course, it is a crock. It's got some blue on it. I love how like you can see the drippy of the finish and how this edge right here is not perfect. Cute. And of course, you know, I want to keep all of this stuff, but I can't. Um, so this is a cloche Ozark walnut ware, genuine Ozark grown solid walnut native wood from Ozark, Missouri. It's really pretty. I was thinking initially when I saw it, I'd paint it, but it's so pretty I probably won't. Cloche, I don't sell these a lot. I love cloches. They're not huge sellers for me. When I paint the bases of them, they sell better. Let's see. And then this is just a little crate um, production Argentina. Oh, here we go. Garlic. Some cool advertising next box this is a good one this is some of the stuff i saw originally on the post not this but the, the stuff in there this one is from garnett kansas that's where my grandma um lived and where my mom was born so that was special and she had 7.95 on it um saline salts i love brown jugs i love amber glass next up we get to these crocs no numbers or marking on them 
Um, I'll probably sell them all. <laughs> Couldn't even say that with a straight face. I'll probably sell them most of them. How about that? I'll probably sell most of them. Maybe not this one. Look at the handle. That one's super cute too. Rusty handle. Another one with a handle, a wire handle and a jug handle. And last one in this box has a stamp. Oh my goodness, does anybody else get this excited about junk? I have a croc addiction. <laughs> I love the imperfection here where the glazing's like off. Love nice it. Little boxes, a few more jars. That's like another great green tinted one. Cool lid on it. Another fun bottle. I like that little detail on the side. And then this one is full of all kinds of little treasures. Last thing here in this box is this big apothecary jar full of vintage pool balls. Next box. Another cool crock jug. This one is a haul made in the USA 788. And it's brown with a yellow inside. Very pretty. An old rusty spoon and tongs. Those are cool. Be a cool display in a vignette. What would you do with these? Claw feet, finials, a resin. Those are sweet. I didn't know those were in there. This is just obviously modern tin. Um, it did have the wood handles though, and those are cute painted up. So I grabbed that. This one um, was old. Apparently it was under a bird feeder. It's fine. We'll deal with that one later. Ooh, this is a super cool crock. Look at the edge of that. That's the glazing. Ooh, it's like that on the inside too. Little brown one. Super cute in your kitchen with some utensils in it. I see that one's kind of plain. Not the best brown color. So I might paint that one. Maybe, maybe not. Another crock here, no markings, but it's a good size. Great for your rolling pins. Great for a plant. You can put your plants down on this. A fiddle leaf would look super cute in here for sure. Another crock jug. I think these were whiskey jugs, right? Spool, pottery barn. So modern, but made to look antique. And another cool crock. I like them when they're all chipped up and dinged up like that. Can you imagine all the different things that this has held and all the different homes it's been in over the years? Next up was this little box of metal finials. And I asked her, I was like, what do you think those were from? And she's like, a fence. Like the top of a an iron fence or whatever. And that makes total sense. They're super cool though. And I mean, obviously I'll either sell these as a lot or repurpose them. It's so hard to decide. These aren't my favorite. So maybe I'll sell the stars. This cup just had a, that's old butter container. Just had a bunch of lids, random lids. And I like to have these because a lot of the jars I have are lidless. So just lids. And when she, like right after she said, hey, I've got some other stuff for sale or whatever, we walked into the garage. These two crocs were like right there on the shelf. There's something inside that one. Okay, we're gonna look at that later. <laughs> it looked furry or something, I don't know. Nothing in this one. <laughs> and there's no markings on them. Um, I'll, I'll just like wipe the dust off, but obviously I'm not gonna try to get any of that patina off or anything. Cool, those are big, so what are those like? 
a gallon. We have the last box of jars. I love jars. I mean, you guys have seen my jar collection already. Um, I'll, pro I'll keep a couple, but I'll sell most of these. Last up, we've got this tote. A little chalkboard. Not vintage, but we can make it look that way. Postal scale. Cute. Some good respatina on it. Be careful, I get excited. Cute little brown pitcher. She had originally $7.95, marked it down to four. It's wooden antelope. Doesn't look like he has any damage. He's cute. Ooh, another hall stoneware green. Oh, look at that color. This is the new farmhouse green. I love mint. I love turquoise, y'all, but this is the this is the new farmhouse green color. So if you see this, pick it up. Next up, an enamel cup. She had $4.95 on it, which isn't bad. I found a really cute um, green one at the thrift store the other day, but they wanted like $8 or something. If this was a different color, I might keep it, but I'll probably end up selling. This is going to get painted for sure, but it's pressed in. Um, paint it black. It's pretty painted black. Oh, I think maybe they glued that. Might have been a DIY. That cross is kind of cool though. It's got um, a little shimmery glass in it. She had nine on it, marked it down to five. It didn't sell, now it's mine. This was a cute little picture stand. I probably won't do anything but clean that up. I like the green color. This is a brass rocking horse. She had 15 on it, marked it down in half. And again, now it's mine. I know somebody who might want this, Kim. <laughs> Grabbed them. Oh, look, that one's been chewed on by like a mouse or something probably. Um, but I grabbed them because I had other ones already and I want to resurface something with them eventually, you know, like do a, um, a top on something. But these are great. These have awesome patina. A lot of them are from Kansas, Wellsville, Wellsville. Cool, Ottawa. Sweet. That one's from, oh, Shreve Point, Louisiana. Ottawa. Cool roll. Oh, go KU. There you go, Jasmine. <laughs> Found a few more um, pieces of yard stick here. It looks like these have been cut. Somebody probably did what I'm planning on doing and, and resurfaced something. Rock Chalk, Jayhawk, go KU. Duncan on down to Dallas, the final four bound. Jennifer and Nate Welch, 1986, Valentine's Day. How stinking cute. Ace Hardware. We still have Ace Hardware's here. And sometimes I just want to know the stories behind these things, right? Um, this is a, sh a ship. She's bored. What is this? <laughs> Dang it, she told me, and now I can't remember. And here's a couple of mini ones. Leave me a comment below. What are these? Bugs. I have been hunting for a large glass dome. This one is too heavy in glass <laughs> to ship. So I think I'll probably end up keeping this one. I want to do a really cool piece of repurposed... Um, reclaimed wood underneath of it as a base. I love cloches. Usually these that I find are um, really thin. This one's really thick. You can see some seams on it, so it's pressed, I do believe, but um, it's cool. We're down to the last few things here. Oh, a magic sifter. Sifts flour eight times in one operation. Recommended by the Good Housekeeping Institute. This is going to get flowers in the top of it. I won't like take apart what's inside. That way if somebody wants to display it differently, they can. I don't remember that be that being put in here. <laughs> that might've been an accident, but cool. Little hand towel with some seashells on it. Another little tin after dinner mints. How cute. Is this the lid? No. It's 
close though. Little metal pot. And it's so cute. All right, last couple things here. Hand sifter, vintage. Y'all know I love to use stuff like this to decorate in my kitchen. Another metal tin. This is a Canco. Small Bible. I do like to use these um, for decor and stuff. I don't tear them up. I don't paint them. You know, don't rip off the covers and paint them or anything like that. But I do like to sit them and, and display them. And some people do collect these older Bibles. So. No harm, I promise. And then three of these rulers, which are super neat. They're all just a little bit different. They just make me happy. Okay, that's it. I had one, two, three, four, five, six, 119 plus six is 125, 125 items, less than a dollar per item. I believe this is a great profit margin. I think um, I will be able to keep some really great stuff for myself and not feel guilty about spending a ton of money at the department store buying manufactured items. I'm giving new life to some old things and I have some things I can sell as well. Like I said, I will load some stuff to my website. I'll let you know when I do that. Some stuff will be on a live sale. Some stuff will go to my booth. I hope y'all enjoyed today's haul. It sure was a lot of fun to sit here and go through everything with you. If you like this kind of video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe, and share with a friend so I know what kind of content to bring you next. I will see you back on Sunday. I'm going to take this stuff out to the kitchen and get it processed. I will show you all of that on Sunday, kind of what I'm pricing some of these items for, and then I think I'm just going to do a work with me video. I'm going to film what I'm doing over the next couple days, bring you guys along. It should be a lot of fun. Until then, I will see you later. Bye, friends.